what's up guys peace i'm getting hella distracted okay all right um all right so i'm gonna make an update video about medical school okay so i'm gonna really try to run right through it as much as i can and um i'm really gonna try to run through it i've been wanting to make this video since last month right last month but school has been fucking crazy but it's all good because i got through it and now i can kind of reflect on it and now my battery is about to die so let me go ahead and plug it in um before it dies all right i'm gonna really try to run through this because i don't want to spend too much time but anyway let's let, let's get right into it okay so basically finished first semester of medical school right some of you are like what how you finished first semester of medical school already you know it's only fall and and you're right most schools actually start in the fall uh or in august right we actually start it in the summer in june so i actually go to florida state university college of medicine Go Knowles. <laughs> so we actually started in June and we finished last week, which is around the first week of August. Now we're on break, one week break, and then next week we're gonna get right into it, okay? So grind doesn't stop. Um, semester's been awesome, it's been hell, but it's been awesome. And basically throughout that summer, we got through anatomy, lecture and lab, you know, or cadaver lab, uh, histology, embryology, um, some radiological imaging and we went we learned various physical examinations all right I think that's everything I hope I'm not missing it. I think that's everything right so you know biggest thing is everything connects you know I, that's why I like the whole this whole integration system because when you're thinking about embryo when you're thinking about anatomy you also got to be thinking about embryo especially if you're thinking about a baby right <laughs> you're delivering a baby a baby um I don't know, like they 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 have intestines coming out of their stomach, or what am I saying? They have intestines coming out of their, of their uh, umbilicus or their belly button. Boom! You already know what that is. Um, Merkel's <laughs> diverticulum, right? Which is essentially the mid gut is rotating throughout embryological development, and it usually goes in the umbilicus and comes right back out. When it doesn't come back out, umbilicus closes. Boom! Intestines are right out. And you can see it, you already know how it happens, and you can already think, okay, that that requires surgical intervention. Um, you know, and then, you know, if you're, and then, you know, and then a lot of things are, I'm getting distracted, you know, um, you can, and then, and then histology, like, there's so many things that you can, a lot of in, information you get from histology, but we haven't actually, um, got to the pathology that's that's next semester so I'll, I'll talk about histo a little bit more um i guess in another video months from now you know but anatomy we just went through we just went through it the entire body <laughs> you know we have to right <laughs> um but you know we started off with back anatomy went through muscles of the back you know trapezius latissimus dorsi rhomboids you know we have to know function innervation blood supply um you know, then you move on to the arm. Arm is very important because a lot of people injure their arms, you know, car accidents, things like that. We had, we, we went over brachial plexus, right? Brachial plexus is just a series of nerves that come together uh, and they provide motor and sensory innervation to the arm, right? It's called a plexus because most nerves don't come together, but these do. You also have a plexus of nerves in your sacrum. Uh, I think it's, that's called like sacral plexus. I don't know, I don't remember. Yeah, but um, you know, if you, for example, let's say someone, like, let's say someone has a motorcycle injury and they're not wearing protective gear on their arm and they slide uh, and the injury is not superficial but deep to the posterior part of their forearm, you know, or the back of their forearm, you're, you're going to have an idea of what nerve would be damaged, right? Radial nerve, because radial nerve actually comes um, not superficially but deep to it, around the extensor compartment of the arm. You already, boom, you already know. Um, and you have to know because you have to think about okay, uh, wh what you know, how how should the intervention be planned? You know, if someone injures their arm here, boom, you already know ulnar nerve because when we dissect it in a, in cadaver lab, ulnar nerve writes right around the medial aspect or you know medial epicondyle of the arm, and it'll actually go right up, innervate these two fingers, you know, the uh, your lumbricals, which are muscles on that that actually attach to tendons on your. You know on, on, on these fingers and they actually help you flex your finger and then when you have a deficit 
you'll, you'll have the opposite to happen, you know. So if you see a, a patient come in like this, boom, on their claw, <laughs> you know, or, or, or claw hand, you already know, on their nerve damage, you know, things like that, right? We move, and then we move towards, you know, everyone's favorite part of the body, the chest, um, you know, or the, the thoracic cavity, you know, you have your lungs there, um, you have your lungs there, you know, your heart, all that stuff. Um, and then we have to know, we have to, we, we also look at various radiological images like CTs, MRI, and x-rays to go along with the anatomy, you know, because it, it helps when, um, you know, not only do you know where a heart is, is located in the chest, but you're also able to locate it on a CT scan. And, and, and when you're looking at it, you can, I, you can get an idea that, okay, your right atrium is more anterior than your left atrium. Your left atrium is more posterior. Um, you know, so if, if, you, if you see calcification on the anterior side of the radiograph, or, or should I say, you know, a CT, boom. It can't be the left atrium, it's the right atrium, because the right atrium is more anterior on a, on a CT, you know, like, and then we went to head and neck anatomy, there's a lot of stuff, like, head and neck anatomy is just insane, you know, we have to know all the cranial nerves, and then where they're exiting the skull, and, you know, where they're going to, right, and then, like, like for example, let's say someone gets an injury, like, right here, right, you have to know what's under there, <laughs> and you, you, someone gets an injury right there, and then their face is like this, Boom, you already know because right under there is your parotid gland, which is um, a basically a salivary gland that's providing saliva to your mouth. But through the parotid gland, you actually have a series of nerves um, from the facial nerve, which is one of your cranial nerves, that will provide motor innervation to the various muscles of facial expression on your face. So boom, you have the patient, they're like this, you got a cut here, you already know what happened. You know, and then we went through abdominal cavity, um, um, you know, inguinal hernia, direct inguinal hernia. <laughs> you know, if your balls don't drop, if you have, again, like embryo, it all, <laughs> you know, if you want to be an OBGYN, you have a baby, um, and they have a bulge, you know, right, right on, like right, right below, um, like right above the pubic area, they have a bulge right there. You already know that the, the testicles didn't drop, and if it's a male, right? Um, uh, and then you have to know about processes vaginalis. Basically, like, it, is this membranous layer that doesn't um, that's still patent and it doesn't allow the, the the scrotum to descend? And it's I think it's very common too, um, you know. And then you know, and then if if you have a patient with right, right lower <laughs> pain, right lower quadrant pain. If it's a male, boom, you already suspect appendicitis because that's where the that's the area where the appendix is. A lot of people know that already, but like, let's say it's a woman. Um, <laughs> you have to think, okay, yeah, I'm thinking appendicitis if it's a woman, but a woman also has ovaries in that area. Their uterus is in that area. You know, if they're young, they're, you gotta think about, okay, when was the last time this woman has had sex? Because then you have to think about, okay, uh, ectopic pregnancy, if the, if the fertilized egg has attached somewhere outside of the uterus, it can, it can cause pain in that right lower quadrant also. You know, if they're older, you have to think, okay, you know, are they at risk? They, they may be at increased risk for ovarian cancer and ovarian cancers get huge. Oh my God, like I can go on and on about this, but I'm not gonna like spend too much time. But the bigger picture is, you know, anatomy is awesome. You gotta know your anatomy before you know anything else. Gotta know normal before abnormal. And this semester, that summer semester, we learned so much. And then we got our white coats after. Um, I might put a picture on there, we'll see. Um, you know, we got our white coats after. And it's like, when we got them, we felt like, okay, I can actually think <laughs> through some of this stuff, you know? Um, uh, and wow, like it's a blessing, man. It's a blessing to learn this stuff and to be able to benefit a patient one day through this knowledge. Um, this stuff isn't difficult. It's just constant studying. Um, you know, like, especially if you're, if you're, especially if you're a science student, like you've already had background in bio and, you know, 
molecular bio and chemistry and physics, you know, pr physics you learn about pressure, and, you know, difference in pressure between systems, and you can all you could already think about how hepatic portal hypertension occurs. You know, you have a difference in pressure between inferior between your your cable system or your, the venous blood that's returned to the heart and your hepatic portal system which is blood that's not going straight to the heart but it's actually going to the liver and then if you have increased pressure in there because maybe uh you know there's liver services due to excess alcohol intake for x amount of years you have build up of pressure in the lungs and then all of that blood it actually backs up into those um various veins that connect the hepatic portal blood to uh, blood in the inferior vena cava and then those that blood basically bulges you know you can <laughs> you stick an endoscope down someone's esophagus you can see the the bulging of the blood um and then think about think about a patient that has that like they can't eat um uh, and they may become anorexic because literally the esophagus is, is narrowing down because these veins are bulging um on the esophagus you know hemorrhoids happen the same way um there's so much, but I can go on and on about this, um, but it's doable, and I overreacted the first video, it was just a lot of stress, um, and it's, it's, again, it's a blessing to know this stuff, you know, and I just pray that you guys hang in there and, you know, stay awesome. I'm going to make another video talking about some other things, uh, that especially some questions that other people ask, but anyway. You guys stay awesome and take care. Peace out.